Arcane is one of the best shows to come out in the recent years. It was so well written to a degree that even the side characters killed it when it comes to playing their part in the story. In this review, I'm not going to focus on the major characters of Arcane because that session is probably well covered by everyone else on YouTube already. Instead, I'm just gonna aim to give some more love and appreciation towards the other underrated side characters of Arcane, who no one else talks about just to prove my point. The first side character in this analysis will be Grayson. Sheriff Grayson represented a rigid, strict, and somewhat tyrannical regime in the eyes of the people of the under city. She's probably hated by the people living in the fissures for the simple fact that she served as the head of the dreaded enforcers. But from what was shown on the screen, undercity people didn't fully appreciate how far she was willing to compromise with her office by cutting off a deal with Vander to ensure everyone's safety. When the explosion on Topside occurred, which angered the council, ordering the enforcers to go out for retaliation, Grayson immediately contacted Vander to soften the blow, trying to minimize the potential damage Spiltover was about to inflict on its undercity. Grayson didn't want bloodshed. She was a rational and less level-headed leader, an individual so modest she was even willing to share honor and praise to other people. I personally think she's a good person. Now let's talk about value. What value does she bring to the table? For starters, I can confidently say that Grayson has been very influential. She has affected some of the major characters immensely in the show. The show implied that Grayson was actually the one who influenced Caitlyn the most in her decision to become an enforcer, especially in the scene when she asked Caitlyn what she was actually aiming for. She also said to her the following words, I'm an enforcer. For me, knowing how to handle this weapon means being able to protect people, to be of service to the city. That's trophy enough. The purpose of that scene is to establish the fact that Caitlyn finally found what she was shooting for by using her skills to pursue justice and truth in Piltover, all thanks to Grayson. When it comes to Grayson's effects on Vander, it was very clear that she has helped out the Hound of the Underground in preserving peace and stability between the two cities. Grayson was reasonable and can be worked with. As the sheriff, she did the things that she needed to do, but she still always went out of her way to give chances to people to pick the rational decisions that would seem to yield the more favorable outcome. Imagine how much trouble Vander would have faced if Grayson wasn't the sheriff and another more stern and less agreeable one was put into office instead of her. Also, she obviously had a strong effect on Marcus, serving as his mentor. Marcus viewed her as the ideal individual, an honorable enforcer, and a good woman. And her influence probably made Marcus reconsider his dirty works under Silco's shadow. So, is Sheriff Grayson a well-written side character? Hell yes. Why? Because she added a lot of value to the story by greatly influencing the decisions and the developments of some of the more major characters. Before we review the other side characters, let's first ask ourselves this question. Why do side characters need to give some sort of value first before we can consider them as well written? And what actually makes a good side character? Is there an objective, unbiased criteria already established by an unquestionable authority figure in writing that can assess whether a character is well written or not? Or is everything just subjective and opinion based? I'm not an established writer with a best selling novel and I'm not a master of the art of character writing. But as an aspiring creator, I have my own preferences and standards when it comes to analyzing fictional characters I so enjoy watching. My take is somewhat similar to the Russian playwright Anton Chekhov's writing principle called Chekhov's Gun, which states that every element of a story should be necessary. If a writer featured a gun in scene 1, then it has to be fired sometime later on in the story, otherwise there would be no point in adding that gun to the script. What's the point if we're not even gonna use it? The same goes for side characters. If they're there, then they also should provide something that would enhance the story. I know that some people criticize this principle, saying that it's ridiculous, especially when taken too literally. What if a whole warehouse of guns was discovered by the main characters? Are they supposed to use and fire all of those weapons up as well? And as for the guns that were not fired, the side characters that were shown once who also haven't done much and are never to be seen again? I guess some people find it a bit aesthetically pleasing to see these characters meet one another even when they would never cross paths ever again. A seemingly inconsequential detail that can add flavor and emotional value to the story being served to the readers. Similar to what the American novelist Ernest Hemingway pointed out in his criticisms on the idea of Chekhov's gun. All opposing forces considered, I think it is safe to say that if a story element, in this instance, a side character, adds some sort of plot significance or emotional value to the story, it could never be considered as a negative thing in writing. Therefore, I think that adding value to the story is the main reason why a side character should be considered as well written. Next one on the list will be Ambesa Medarda. Similar to Grayson, this side character who only showed up in the last few episodes of the season made a great mark and effect on the other characters of the show, especially on her daughter Mel. What value did Lady Medarda give to the story? Lady Medarda served as the shadow figure in 
counselor Mel Medardas past, a part of Mel that she rejects and doesn't identify with. As one of the leaders of the Medarda clan of Noxus, who were known for conquest and ruthlessness, Mrs. Medarda acted in a Machiavellian fashion, doing whatever is necessary in order to secure her and her family's personal interests, even if that meant getting her hands dirty. She even stated that she would set the world ablaze to protect her family. She was a strong woman who doesn't get phased, showing no emotional weakness. She was also well-spoken and well-versed when it comes to the philosophies of warfare. We can say that she's the polar opposite of her daughter Mel, who was more into diplomacy and delicate statescraft. But one can definitely see that Mel's decisiveness, manipulation skills, and inner prowess when it comes to using authority and power were things that she definitely got from her mother. Mrs. Medarda also affected Jace greatly. After giving him her advice regarding Piltover's undercity problem, she advised Jace to be more stern and aggressive so he wouldn't end up like General Parlick, slaughtered with his eyes closed by the problem that's right in front of him. And what did Jace do afterwards? Didn't he attack one of Silco's shimmer factories with weaponized Hextech? All in accordance to what Mrs. Midarda advised? I know that there are a lot of moving pieces at play here, but we can safely say that Mrs. Midarda's conversation with Jace greatly affected the counselor's judgment. That is the value that Mrs. Midarda gave. She provided emotional conflict to the major characters, serving as the shadow figure in their dreams, the tempting voice in their heads telling them to let go, greatly affecting their major decisions. For the diplomatic society of Piltover, she represented the alternative, what it all could have been if violence, power, and ruthlessness were their best cards to play at any given situation. Mrs. Midarda was a Giga Chad queen, and her influence and effects on the major characters convinced me in proclaiming that she's a very well-written side character. Arcane is simply one of the best shows out there, because aside from Ambassador Medarda and Sheriff Grayson, the other side characters of the show played their part really well as well. Take Marcus and Milo for example, they weren't built up to be the characters that you would like, but they ended up being the characters that the story needed. Milo was a jerk to powder. I didn't really like him, but I can't deny that he served his purpose well. His character acted as an agent to enhance the emotional journey and conflict of one of the central characters who was supposed to carry the show. Milo affected Powder so much, and if memory serves me correctly, he was the first one to call her Jinx, a nickname that painfully lasted all throughout the show. Milo's shadow was living rent-free in Jinx's head, haunting her all throughout the series. To sum everything up, I found the side characters of Arcane to be very compelling, and it's due to the fact that they added a lot of value to the show by influencing the major characters and providing conflict that was needed in order for the story to progress. You might not grow to like some of them, but we can't deny that they all played their part, and boy did they play it well. Most of these side characters also have clear motivations and layers of insecurity that makes them seem like actual, conflicted, living people. And that is just some of the side characters. I haven't even scratched the surface. There's a lot more reasons why Arcane is deemed by many as one of the best shows to be released in the recent years, and in my opinion, it clearly deserves all the love that it's getting from the fans. That's pretty much it for my take in this video. If you want to see more of this type of content, please support this channel by clicking the subscribe button so you could get more updates. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.